I was watching television late one night when my stomach made a sound that was not quite right. From my belly the hunger began to rise and then suddenly, to no surprise, I ate the snacks, I ate the chocolate snacks and salty snacks. So many I lost track, I ate the snacks, there was no going back, I ate the snacks, I ate the Halloween snacks. You tried to... You tried that, the Halloween episode. I'm Nick Novak with my pals Chad Hancock. You can call me Charcoals. And Nick Geiger. D- don't call me Charcoals. <laughs> I thought you were going to say uh, some kind of Halloween thing. What's Charcoals? Uh, <laughs> just so we're, uh, we're planning a, a short trip to Australia. Actually, by the time this episode comes out, we will be back. So don't rob my house. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I was I was booking this hotel on like some island in the Great Barrier Reef, and I got the hotel confirmation email this morning, and it said, "Charcoals, your trip is <laughs> confirmed." For some reason, they put my name is Charcoals. I don't know why. So you're gonna have trouble when you get there because you're not Charcoals. <laughs> so I, I emailed them back and I said, "Hey, just so you know, my name's not Charcoals. Can you correct the reservation?" And she replied and said, "Okay, it's corrected. I'll resend the confirmation email." And then I got a new confirmation email that says, your trip is confirmed, Charcoals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Charcoals. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I replied again and I said, hey, the new confirmation email still says Charcoals. And she's like, well, I've checked in the system. It doesn't say that anymore. So I don't know why it says that still. No problem, Charcoals. All right. We'll see <laughs> oh, that's Charcoals Chancock. Got it. What? <laughs> Probably just some other weird Australian thing, right? Where, like, everyone's name there is either Croc or Charcoals. <laughs> <laughs> is Charcoals a clown that you used to go for go as uh, for Halloween? <laughs> like a chocolate Chuckles. What was your guys' favorite Halloween costume or that you ever had as a, as a child? Is there, is, or there, is there even one you can remember? Yeah, I, I, did, I was never all that super creative as a child. I did go... I think I went three or four years in a row as a ninja and ninja costume was literally just, I made my mom go get like a Taekwondo costume from like a kid's Taekwondo studio. I wasn't even taking it. I just said, go get me the costume. And then uh, I was like, I'm a ninja. I was carrying around a plastic sword. I think I did that for a bunch of years in a row. Did you not, did you want to take Taekwondo? Um, no, because it meant not playing Nintendo. So (laughs) (laughs) did you want to take Taekwondo Nintendo? (laughs) But I remember like my mom sewed some elaborate costumes for my brother. Like she made him some handmade dinosaur costume one year that was like all the different pieces and she sewed them from scratch and stuff. And then I just only ever wanted to go ninja. (laughs) So I'm sure it was like a huge letdown. Did you join the Taekwondo studio and then they tried to make you eat a carrot? And you threw up all over the place. <laughs> and then uh, they were, for the test, they were like, break this board, charcoals. <laughs> and you walked into the dojo and they brought out a board. And then you said, before you before you get to break this board, you have to defeat your arch nemesis. You turn around, Dr. Payne is striding into the dojo. <laughs> no! He crane kicks you through the window. And then I'm landing, sitting on the ground, and he just spikes a tetherball in my face. <laughs> right. Geiger, do you remember any costume? Um, I mean, we went, I think I had most of this pretty standard, like, Packers player, Batman, like Super Grover, I think when I was little. Packers player is a standard costume? Wisconsin it is, yeah. Every every boy is a Packers player? Just streets littered with Packers? <laughs> every boy. Player. I think like... I think like the chief of police in our town and like, <laughs> like the dentist. I mean, it wasn't even Halloween. I no, I had, uh, I think the more creative one, I was Santa Claus one year. So I got to wear like a big beard and like I stuffed my, you know, I got a, a Santa suit and then I carried all the candy in like a pillowcase. And then every completely unoriginal adult was like, oh, 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 I think you got the wrong holiday. And that got pretty old after like the 19th house in a row. But it was it was fun. I used to wear the Santa beard all the time. I would find all kinds of uses for it later, like school projects and stuff like that. So we um, all famously uh, the Halloween we most talk about, <laughs> the three of us all attended uh, <laughs> okay. was in Madison, <laughs> and uh, Chad and I went to a costume shops and got Sesame Street costumes. Where I was uh, Cookie Monster, but uh, he was called the Big Fur. 
because they didn't have the licensing to it. <laughs> and Chad was Oscar the Grouch or Can Man. Um, <laughs> as we went through the streets, for whatever reason, Cookie Monster was slightly more popular with the girls. Yeah, more people like Cookie Monster than Oscar the Grouch. And yeah. so, <laughs> we still laugh about I was taking pictures with all these girls and <laughs> Chad was going, what about Can Man? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's even funnier because you can't see Chad's face. You just hear like, it sounds like it's coming from like a garbage can somewhere like, what about Can Man? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, I wore that huge, uh, huge sweaty, like, I'm sweating balls, I can't even drink or anything, All and then all the girls are flocking to the better mascot costume. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to that same one, and they didn't have any of those mascot costumes. All they had left was, like, a really patchy, really smelly Donatello costume, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> so I got the World's Worst Spider-Man costume, which was, like, a long sleeve shirt, a mask, like, gym shorts. And like blue tights, and then I didn't have any shoes to go with, so I just wore my Doc Martens, <laughs> just business casual Spider Man strolling about town. Uh, and then our other friend went as Blue Man Group, but when he wore a Cubs jacket, everyone just th- kept thinking he was a Cubs fan. <laughs> we just started cracking up. And he just basically painted his face blue. And then our Asian friend went as <laughs> Willy Wonka. <laughs> we just spent the whole night referring to him as Willy Wong. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of years after that, I think the last time I dressed up seriously for Halloween, I was hanging out with you guys. We went out to a party and I went as a uh, Hannah Montana. Oh, yeah. I went to a clothing like some uh, thrift stores to try to find some teenage girls clothing that would fit me. And it was just the all time creepiest I've ever felt like browsing <laughs> this like teenage girls clothing and then like holding it up to myself like in the mirror. Like, oh, is this like shiny tank top going to fit me? <laughs> this is supposed to look like the weirdest pervert. I can confirm that when you were done, you was also the creepiest you've ever looked. <laughs> yeah, I had like I had makeup on and a thick wig. A five o'clock shadow and makeup. <laughs> the, the Madison was also the site of my favorite other costume I've ever seen. Like someone who put the least amount of effort in possible. We were all sitting outside the bathroom. I don't know if you guys remember this. And this guy strolls out just wearing a sweatshirt and glasses. Yes. And the, the movie K packs have come out recently. <laughs> like Kevin Spacey is an alien or something. And he just cut the word K packs from the magazine, taped it to his sweatshirt and then cut Kevin Spacey's face up in the ad and taped it to his glasses. And I remember he came out of the bathroom and I just about lost my shit. I was laughing so hard. I'm like, look guys, it's K packs. Was he walking around molesting uh, young men like uh, Kevin Spacey also? Yes. No, yes. He was going, what about K- K-Pax? And then grabbing people's asses. There's, there's two I remember as a kid. One was, I don't know if you guys remember these old McDonald's commercials. You used to have this like big moon-headed guy oh, yeah. playing the piano. Max, Mac Tonight, Max his moon. name was. Or, yeah, Mac Tonight, right. And my dad like took all this time to make this giant moon head. Really? And it was bigger than I was. And so I like <laughs> lugged this thing around the entire day. <laughs> Probably still have like... Uh, vertebrae problems today from wearing this costume um and then after that i think i said no more costumes like that i famous there's a picture i have where i was still pretty young and like that i just put on my dad's old football jersey that he had and i think he only had this jersey because it was number 69 (laughs) (laughs) but i was like nine years old wearing this number 69 jersey of indiscriminate team around the neighborhood did you actually want to go as that uh, half moon guy or did your dad just make you? I guess. I don't know. I, I don't remember requesting. I, I don't, <laughs> don't you remember how popular he was with the kids? Was it, <laughs> did he have to make it because it was sold out of all stores? And plus, I was like on the playground like, hey, what about Mac tonight? <laughs> <laughs> all the girls are like, huh? It would be a weird, um, like of all the McDonald's mascots, so the one to like grab onto as a kid. Not like Grimace or like Hamburglar, right. like one of these funny or cute ones or whatever. You're like, I want to be that like smooth talking Frank Sinatra style moon. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my dad, we had a soccer game on the day of trick or treat. It was a Saturday. So my dad like his, was a, uh, one of the coaches in our team. And no, it was like it was, the game was about to start. We couldn't see where he was. And all of a sudden I just see this giant, this guy dressed in a giant gorilla costume wearing a Wisconsin Badgers hat, slowly strolling to the field. And I'm like, what the fuck? And my dad started coaching the game as a gorilla. And then it got like, 
he got really angry at a call and remember he's like screaming at the ref and it looked hilarious so he like whipped his hat down and like pulled his mask off furiously yelling at the ref and my, the referee was just recoiling in horror like he's actually turning into a man an angry ape i definitely want to uh go trick-or-treating in wisconsin one time and just wade through the sea of packers players <laughs> <laughs> thousands of packers players just roaming the streets did you were you guys like real like i know so there's some kids who like take all these like pains to figure out the best route for the like maximum candy and stuff like did you guys do it we basically were allowed to like go around our block and then we'd go to my grandma's house and that's about it like we wouldn't we weren't very elaborate trick-or-treaters yeah it wasn't we didn't live in like a wealthy neighborhood or anything so it was sort of where there was always that myth of how this house had a right. king size candy bar <laughs> yeah. and you'd all search for that house and you'd never come home with a king size candy bar but then there'd be like one year some house would be handed them out and you'd be running down the streets like hey they got a king size candy bar <laughs> over on <Smith> Street. <laughs> hey mac tonight you gotta get over there <laughs> you're one second like slowly turning around with your giant head <laughs> I ran up to the king size house. I'm like, what about Mac tonight? I mean, we definitely had like a really big neighborhood with tons of houses. So we would come home with huge stashes. And then it was just a matter of dumping the candy out on the living room floor. And then the trading between my brother and me starts like, okay, I'll give you, you know, these Skittles for like your M&Ms or whatever it was. When my kids were really little, it was the best because when they're like two, you have to walk up and you kind of pick the candy out for them. They're like, take a piece. And you're like, Oh, okay. And then I'm like searching through looking for the candy that I want. (laughs) (laughs) You're just literally stealing candy from your babies. (laughs) (laughs) Or like when it's stickers, you're just like sorting through the stickers and then asking them to go back inside the house and get a Dracula one. (laughs) Oh, wait. You guys don't do that? Stickers? There was this house in our neighborhood that was notorious. They would give out like Cracker Jack prizes. We'd all be pissed off. Like we'd get like a skeleton sticker. I'm like, oh, great. I'm a nine-year-old kid. I can't wait to play with this fucking sticker. Or they gave us, like, those fake Dracula teeth. I'm like, give me some fucking candy or whatever. I'd be your You're a foul-mouthed kid. That's, like, one step up from getting a penny. Like, that's awful. My parents had to do that. I remember my mom saying one year they ran out of candy. There was, like, a ton of kids randomly. And so she had to, like, go into their change jar and start just handing out, like, dimes to kids. <laughs> you know, she didn't want to turn them away. Yeah, at that point, you just close up shop, like turn off all the lights. Leave a bowl outside of we had a house, lettuce or something. I still remember it. Everyone knew it every year, gave out five pennies to every kid. That's so weird. I burned that place to the ground. <laughs> you waited until they were on the train, then you put a bunch of pennies on the tracks to flatten them out and derail their train. <laughs> I'm not trying to like alienate any listeners here, but if you're listening to this podcast and you're the kind of person that gives out pennies at Halloween, turn off the podcast, go find the nearest bridge, and jump off it. You're worthless. Mm. Strong That's stands. something we can all agree on. I think. <laughs> so now, how honest are you guys? So, like, when you walked up to the big old bowl and said, "Take one," would you actually take one, or would you be one of those assholes that dumps the whole bowl into their bag? I wouldn't dump the whole bowl in the bag, but I would definitely take more than one. It would be like probably four or five. I would take. I uh, probably two or three to take one. I wanted to take one. My dad was always there, or my mom, so she, they would always like monitor my stealing. Your mom and dad followed you around to make sure you only took one out of take one bowls? They followed us around. We And also, the not the other not fun thing is, in our neighborhood, trick or treat was during the day. So it wasn't even like a nighttime activity. We do it at night out here. That obviously. is very not fun, yeah. It has to be at Which night. Packers player did your mom go as? Uh, she went as... Uh, I gotta be careful here. Um, <laughs> what's the... What's the skinniest, best looking one? Uh, <laughs> uh, she went as fat Swiggy. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, she went as Pat. I can't think of Pat now. <laughs> I thought I had one. Uh, oh, well, I fail. I fail on all accounts there. Getting hungry talking about these uh, Halloween snacks. Let's dig into some ourselves. We. Uh... We're going to rate some Halloween snacks. We have a five-point rating system. It is a love dat, like dat, indifferent to dat, dislike dat, or hate dat. And let's start with the uh, marshmallow guy. So we each picked out one of these as one we wanted to try. So I picked out, this is the Russell Stover Marshmallow in Milk Chocolate Pumpkin. So here's why I picked this out. Pretty simple, actually. I've never tried these before. And it's one of those ones, like I always see the Russell Stover on the shelf, you know, at Walgreens or at the grocery store or whatever. 
and it's always right next to the Reese's pumpkin. And I will <laughs> never buy this over the Reese's pumpkin. Like ones where it's like, I've always wanted to try it, but I never will because I'll get the Reese's. So this seemed like a good excuse to finally give this a shot. It's a pretty substantial piece of candy. Like it's pretty thick and wide. It doesn't look like a jack-o'-lantern. It just looks like a ball with a stem on top. So it's just a marshmallow coated in chocolate, basically. Yes. It's not the type of thing you would get handed out from a house. Right. If they were, they would be one of the houses that people would be telling Max Boone about or whatever his name was. Max Boone? I think I was getting him confused with Max Headroom. It's uh, <laughs> Mac Tonight. Sorry. Mac Tonight. Right. <laughs> this marshmallow is definitely a bit better than the marshmallow you get with like the marshmallow Santas on mm-hmm. Christmas or some of these more generic chocolate covered marshmallow treat. So you know what this reminds me of, which we tried was uh pinwheels. Yeah. Without the cookie. The marshmallow is really soft and springy and it tastes good. And the chocolate's pretty good too. So uh, Geiger, what are you going to rate this guy? Yeah. Um, as I finish it, I really enjoyed this. It was good. I mean, this is kind of my wheelhouse. I like chocolate covered marshmallows. Brussels Dover is being as popular as it is. I couldn't tell you one thing about like any other candy. Like I've obviously eaten it a bunch, but there's nothing like a like a Cadbury egg. I could tell you right away, like well Cadbury because I love them so much. Um, but this is good. This is tasty. I'm actually trying to decide between a like that or a love that. Whoa! Wow! I really like it. It's tasty. I'm probably gonna stay like that. It's a very. It's like a highly rated like that for me. I won't say love because it's still kind of just a standard piece of candy, but it's very very tasty. The marshmallow is really good. And it kind of t- it sounds dumb for talking about like candy. It was probably sitting on a shelf for two months, but it t- tasted like the marshmallow tasted fresh. It wasn't like hard and like chewy. It was like springy and fluffy and wonderful. So it was quite the treat. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever heard anyone talk or describe a marshmallow as fresh tasting <laughs> or springy. That's a- <laughs> You're describing it like a mattress. It tastes like a marshmallow that you just picked right off the marshmallow tree. You ever guys go out to the orchard and just pick your own marshmallows? <laughs> like right off the tree? All right, Chad, what do you think? Uh, this is a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I mean, I just when I bite into it, the first thing I noticed was that it was very springy. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is probably the first piece of candy from Russell Stover that I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, don't, I can't think of another one that I would have gotten. Yeah, it's good pretty solid uh, it's not blowing me away but it's it's a really solid snack i'm gonna go like that all right uh i have i do have at least a little history with russell stover did you date his daughter <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> i dressed up as mac tonight and then <laughs> seduced her she was like standing alone at a bar and she heard what about mark tonight <laughs> huh? turned around it worked on her you're playing the piano <laughs> She said, my, my dream man is someone who can play both Mac Tonight and Big Fur. <laughs> who has that kind of acting range? <laughs> the, that Big Fur costume didn't look anything like Cookie Monster either. I'm surprised at how popular it was. <laughs> no. Like, the eyes were super, like, far apart. It was really strange looking. Um, all right. This is fine. I agree it's better than I thought, but I generally don't love these chocolate-covered marshmallows while it is fresh and springy um Mm -hmm. as geiger described go on i just i would never buy this again and eat it like i just wouldn't do that because it's right next to the reese's pumpkin jesus age (laughs) (laughs) i'm torn between an indifferent and a like would would you think the springiness maybe brings it up to a like (laughs) the springiness like boing does it bounce it up into a like the springiness brought it up from a dislike i would say so oh all right and the freshness brought it almost to a like, but it's at just the upper end of an indifferent. So the springy fresh marshmallow is left outside. Uh, no welcome visitor here, but a, a very strong start with two likes and an indifferent. And uh, let's let's save the Reese's for last. So let's go with the candy corn okay. next. I mean, you guys think I was joking, but when I bought that Russell Stover thing, I also came home from the store with two regular Reese's pumpkins. I don't think any one of us thought you were joking. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure if I looked at half of your grocery list, it would just say Reese's, 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 Oreos, and then like milk and butter. Yeah, I bought two Reese's pumpkins and an outrageous with pieces. What's an outrageous? It's like a, it's a new nutrageous, but then they've stuffed Reese's pieces into it, and for some reason they call it outrageous. <laughs> It's actually really good. I'm addicted to it right now. I like the outrageous. I might have to look for that. All right, Geiger, you picked out the candy corn. Yeah. Let us know why. Honestly, I don't remember liking candy corn, but 
it is the most like I just was trying to think of like it to me it's like the most ubiquitous like Halloween candy the you like ubiquitous sorry uh, Halloween candy of like just the filler candy that is at the bottom of every Halloween basket or like trick or treat, lazy trick or treat people just dump a bunch of candy corn into a bowl. So I had not had it in a really long time, so I thought it would be appropriate to try it here. So this is the Brock's Classic Candy Corn. Looks just like you remember with the yellow tip, the orange stripe in the middle, and the white at the end. Probably, nope, still tastes like shit. So Have you have <laughs> you've gotten loose candy corn trick-or-treating? Yes. Well, like, you know, like the grab bags or like a treat bag or something, and there's like a – they're almost like the jelly bean of Halloween, kind of. No, you have not? You don't get jelly beans at Halloween? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, do you have, do you only get full bags of of candy corn away? Well, no, people don't hand you unwrapped candy anymore. Like, I think that would be suspicious to get the unwrapped candy, so. But I don't know how they do stuff in Wisconsin. I, all I know is that everyone dresses as a Packers player. <laughs> in, in Wisconsin, they they just cut actual corn off the cob and put it in the inner. You're, they're just for straight from the farm and a glass of milk. That's what you get for trick or treat. It's called candy corn. <laughs> Yeah, well, they sprinkle some sugar on it. It's like candy corn. So this is made with real honey, and I don't... Do you taste any honey? There's no honey in this. This is just all sugar. Chad, you're leading us off, so why don't you let us know what you think and give us a rating. It's been probably 20-plus years since I've had candy corn. Now I know why. You're welcome. Here's what it tastes like. When you get a sheet cake from the grocery store, you bring the sheet cake home. Then you take a knife, and you just scrape all the frosting off, then take that frosting and form it into a little triangle and put it in your mouth. You did that? I'm saying that's what this is. I just scraped the sheet cake frosting off, put it in a bowl, and let give it to my trick-or-treaters. <laughs> you say, please take one scoop, and you leave a little spoon out. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. It's so, it's so sweet. Like, you wouldn't eat frosting without the actual cake. I love frosting on cake, but frosting by itself is like, it's insane to eat that. This is way too sweet. And plus, like, the waxy texture around the outside holding it together is just so off-putting to me. So this is going to get a pretty strong dislike dad for me. I can't go hate that because I did eat, like, five or six just now. It didn't make me recoil in horror. So, yeah, dislike dad for me. Would you basically take a cake and cover it in candy corn as, like, a frosting substitute? Would that be good? That sounds bad. <laughs> I like... <laughs> So those of you who can't see Chad, Chad like leans in and puts his hand on his like chin, like real like ponderously. <laughs> oh boy, I have a real serious answer to that question. No, no, it wouldn't taste very good. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I was trying to picture like, hmm, what would this be like? <laughs> All right, this I knew I was gonna be alone on this. I don't know why I like candy corn. I don't know why I like it. I under everything oh, I that you've back. described, even even Chad's description. At first, I, I I was angered because I like it, but then I'm like, wait, that's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> and i don't like frosting at all either like i hate i scrape frosting off of 90 percent of the cakes i eat so for whatever and reason you replace it with candy corn. I, I like <laughs> i like candy corn my wife likes candy corn we probably go through like a bag or two every halloween well i guess i know who's getting my leftover candy corn the problem the reason <laughs> the only reason i i don't put it in the love is you can't eat that much of it like uh, i'd say like 10 to 15 in it's kind of like you feel like a little like burning in your throat. It's like a really. Then, I can't. I could not imagine eat. I ate five of these. I could. I could not put back another five right now. Well, this is how many are in this bag? This is a, like a a lot. How many servings does it say that it is? One serving is fifteen pieces. Right. Oh, there, perfect. So I ate one serving. I couldn't eat a single serving. I didn't even know you ate fifteen of these. No, but I'm saying that at once I probably eat fifteen. That'd be like I eat a serving every time oh. I go for it. <laughs> I like candy corn, and sometimes I like to <laughs> actually bite off the pieces, like first you bite off the white, then the orange, and then in my head, they have a slightly different taste to them. <laughs> Jeez, Novak, I did not know you had mental issues. While I'm giving my rating, take out a candy corn and bite the individual pieces and see if you notice. If they taste different in the same way that different colored M&Ms taste different, as in not at all. The white, uh huh. Mm -hmm. There's the white. That white. Now the orange. Oh, there's tropical orange flavor <laughs> I got here. <laughs> They're all good. They're all unique. And then the yellow. Uh huh. Yep. You get it? Hmm. You getting it? Yeah, I think I'm right. Nope. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I think your brain might trick you, but I was going to say, like, the orange maybe tasted a little different, but it's just because it's the biggest. To me, it's there's they're the right size, because sometimes these will come mixed with those, like, little pumpkins that are made of the same thing, and that's, like, too much of it. It's, like, two or three candy corns together. And I also don't really like the chocolate candy corn, which you can get, the brown candy corn. They make chocolate candy corn? It's, like, the same thing, except uh, the white is brown, and it just tastes a little more chocolatey. Oh. I don't know if it's chocolate or not, but... My final rating is going to be a like that for the candy corn, though, so I'm sorry. Geiger, what do you think? That is two Halloween candies that you have zero excuse for liking, because you. Well, I actually thought, when as soon as we said we're each going to pick out a candy, that you were going to pick those terrible peanut butter balls that are wrapped in wax paper that no one likes except you. I looked for them, but they weren't at the stores we agreed to go to. <laughs> They are, like, gritty and terrible, and you're the only person no. on Earth I've ever heard liking them. But they, you must not be the only one, because they make them in a large quantity. You so. need to give them another shot. I I have converted a multiple people into those things, so... I actually don't know what you're talking about. You've probably had in them before. In either black or an orange wrapper, and they're just, like, a little ball of peanut butter. And the peanut butter is, like, super hard, but the there's a little bit on the inside that's, like, a creamier version. It's just called Peanut Butter Kisses, and, like... There's the the wrapping is very indiscriminate, except that uh, it just looks Halloween colored. So find them somewhere. Oh, I've seen those. I don't think I've ever had those. I'm gonna pull those for some other. Uh, I'll get some before the end of the season. All right, there's a teaser there for you, everyone. All right, candy corn. There's a reason I haven't had it in a long time, and that's because candy corn tastes like nuts. Uh, and by that I mean testicles, <laughs> not mixed nuts. I mean, they're just way too sweet. They are extremely sweet. And there's something like almost like sickly sweet about them. Like I can't fathom eating 15 of these at one in one sitting. It would just be such a like I have a sweet tooth. I like sweet. I am I prefer salty over sweet, but I don't mind sweet like candy and stuff like that. I can't eat. like I, I can eat a bag of Skittles. I can't eat a bag of these. These are so so sugary. They taste bad. The aftertaste as I'm sitting here is even worse. It's just like this weird. It's like I drank out of a bottle of syrup. The aftertaste it's kind is of bad. like I it tastes to me. So. This is, ugh, I am actually going to go ahead and say this is a hate that. I don't like them at all. They are ugh, just like, I like I, I was on the border of just disliked that. And then I'm like, I I would be actually pissed if someone made me eat, me eat these. Like, these are like, you have to eat these candy corn. <laughs> you mean like what just happened? <laughs> right, then I made myself eat them, yeah. I have self-loathing right now. My wife just walked by, held up the bag to her. And she gave a look of happiness, and now is holding the bag. So. <laughs> right as she walked by, she heard, "I hate that." No, um, I will. I will literally bring mine uh, next time I see you, and you can have it because I don't want these in my house. I mean, I guess I can give my kids, but tell you anything. All right, so uh, a hate, a dislike, and a like, which still puts the Russell Stovers in the lead. Before we go too far, we'd like to hear. What some candy that you loved was, or what some of your favorite Halloween treats are. Geiger, where can they let us know? All kinds of places. So we are um, social media kingpins. I don't know if you knew that. We're on Facebook. We have a You Tried That uh, Facebook page. You can see us on Twitter at You Tried That. YouTube, You Tried That. Um, we are also, you can uh, email us directly at gmail, uh, you tried that at gmail.com where you can tell us exactly like Noah said, what Halloween candy was your favorite. If you hate candy corn, if you like candy corn, if you're just mediocre on candy corn, really all your thoughts about candy corn related topics, but suggest a, a mailbag episode, anything like that. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback and thanks as always for downloading all 12 of you. Yeah. Slide into our DMS and tell us what is your favorite Halloween costume. How many times have you jacked off to Mac tonight in your lifetime? Yeah, if you want to get up all up in that Mac tonight, just let us know. And know I can go find that old costume and just do, uh, I don't know, like a sexy dance or something. We'll put it on YouTube. You're down with that, right, Novak? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you can go find us on Twitter and respond to this week's poll, which is who's got the bigger hog, Mac tonight or Can Man? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest hog. Yep, who's got that hog? Or uh, Grimace. <laughs> 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 we definitely used to have a conversation when we were teenagers about <laughs> which cartoon character had the biggest wang. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, I didn't know you as a teenager, so I want in. Who did you guys think it was? He Man? Uh, I only I don't remember the discussions much except one of our <laughs> friends thinking Barney. Barney from from the Flintstones. 
And he said, <laughs> well, he basically, like, his clothes extend not far below his waist. And his ex- <laughs> yeah. that one of his legs was his penis. <laughs> <laughs> On the basis of what? Like, why does it have toes? <laughs> I think the argument was that, like, he wouldn't have been able to bag Betty Rubble because he's, like, kind of stupid and ugly, so he must just have, like, a huge hog. Yeah, both of them are really out kicking their coverage. They both work at, what, like a rock factory or something? They have terrible jobs. They're not especially attractive. But they've got hot wives with uh, rock necklaces. That's pretty typical for TV, though, right? That's, That's like true. that King of Queens thing. Barney's at least a nice guy. Fred's an asshole. Fred's an asshole, yeah. Uh, and Kevin James from King of Queens is hot as fuck. I don't know what you're talking about. He also has a giant hog. He's like the <laughs> Mac tonight of the current generation. <laughs> <laughs> and I do think we thought, and what made me think about it was Grimace, because I think we thought Grimace's hog, <laughs> hog was pretty big. Oh, Grimace is packing. <laughs> yeah. It's all under off all that purple waddle. Like, Mayor McCheese is just too uptight. I think he's overcompensating with his position of authority. But uh, Grimace has got a major dog, I bet. Because uh, <laughs> a lot of the cartoon characters, you can tell, like, like Donald Duck doesn't want any more pants. If he had a big old duck schlong, you'd be able to see it. They would animate that, right? You had to get someone with pants. I think it was. I think we also thought Roger Rabbit because Roger Rabbit's pants are are huge, and he's with <laughs> Jessica Rabbit. I think we're forgetting one obvious choice. And guys, I don't want to drag a step back down this hole, but our boy Chester Cheetah might have something to say about this conversation. <laughs> 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 hey, dude. <laughs> yeah, I heard you wanted to see a major slog. <laughs> <laughs> if only the listeners knew the Chester Cheetah porn we've texted back and forth to each other. <laughs> and that's not a joke at all. Yeah, folks, this is entirely, I am not advocating for this, but if you are ever curious, you can text Chester Cheetah porn. There will be some very disturbing images that come up. I just want to say, we are not posting that to the Twitter. Yes, no, not at all. <laughs> so for our segment today, we're going to do a little competition. We talked earlier in the show about how we had worn some costumes that had uh, generic names like Can Man because the companies couldn't get the licensing for them. So I've come up with uh, a whole bunch of names here so <clears throat> after some research. And I'm going to list the generic name of the costume, and then it will be up to you guys to list the actual character it's talking about. Now, these are real generic costumes, not ones you made up. Correct. Yes. They're not me trying to be funny. They're actual existing costumes that I uh, researched today on the internet. And some of them are difficult and some are hard. So I tried to leave out this, the most simple ones, like Plumber Hero to be Mario. <laughs> Right. And then there was one called Out of Space Man, and that was apparently Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Out of Space Man. We'll do, uh, there's 15 each, so I think maybe like a 90 seconds on the clock deal here. All right. So there's two lists, 15 each. You can either say pass or go ahead and give your guess. And then whoever gets the most out of the 15 will be declared the winner. Chad, since you rated the ha- candy corn slightly higher... I'm going to give you the choice of list one or list two. I will go with list two. I gave you that candy corn, Novak. So Chad's taking list two, and I'll start the clock on this end, and then I'll start reading them off. Are you ready? I am ready. All right, here we go. Woodland Warrior. Link. Yes. Tick-tock orange juice. (laughs) Tick-tock orange juice. Pass. (laughs) Bad apple cutie. (laughs) Peach? No. (laughs) One-eyed master's helper. <laughs> this is much harder than I thought. Is that a dick? Iago, I don't know. Deluxe Night Killer. Deluxe Night Killer. Who kills at night? E Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are not going to get any easier. <laughs> Doctor Professor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Doctor Wiley. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ha- <laughs> Mr. Hammerwig. Mr. Hammerwig. <laughs> How are we supposed to get these? Uh, There's gonna be some easier ones. John up. Snow. <laughs> uh, Nighttime Romeo. Nighttime Romeo. Batman. Dark Northern King. Dark Northern King. Okay, that one. John Snow. Yes, you got it. Brothel Babe. 
Brothel Babe? <laughs> babe, Brothel Babe. It's a very recent one. Oh, Brothel Babe. Uh, oh. Pass. I don't know. Catitude. Catitude. <laughs> uh, Garfield. No. Mystery Magician Boy. <laughs> Harry Potter. Yes. Hardworking lady costume. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary Clinton. No. Blue Speed Mouse. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. Last one. Kansas Beauty. <laughs> Dorothy. Yes. All right. We uh, the time didn't even end up mattering, so we went way over because I just wanted to get through. Blue them. Speed All right. Mouse. So you got you got Woodland Warriors, Link, Dark Northern King, Jon Snow, Mystery Magician Boy, Harry Potter, Blue Speed Mouse, Sonic. And Kansas Beauty was Dorothy. You missed. TikTok Orange Juice is the Clockwork Orange guy. I never, I never <laughs> got that. What the fuck? Orange Juice? Bad Apple Cutie is Snow White because she eats the apple. Oh, mm. I should have known uh, that. One-Eyed Master's Helper is the Minion. <laughs> oh, I, I uh, <laughs> Deluxe Night Killer is Freddy Krueger. Oh. Doctor oh. Professor is Doctor Who. <laughs> 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 Mr. Hammerwig is Mr. T for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I paid a fool. Hammerwig. Nighttime, Nighttime Romeo is the Twilight guy. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Brothel Babe is uh, Maeve from Westworld. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I should have known that. Catitude is Grumpy Cat. This is like a Grumpy Cat man. Well, I would have known that in a million years. And hardworking lady costume is Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? From the old like nineteen, uh, the World War Two like movie. Like she's got the do rag on. She's making like a fist. Oh sure, yeah, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know that that was that person's name. No, that it wasn't. It was hardworking lady. Five's pretty good. <laughs> I actually feel like list one might be significantly easier, but we'll see. Oh boy, don't say that until I after I screw <laughs> it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Sure. Juice Demon. Ju- <laughs> the the, Kool- the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> no. Purple Rock Star. Grimace. <laughs> Purple Rock Star. Grimace is no rock star because it's got a big hog. Barney. I don't fucking know. Misfit Sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> Any sidekick ever. I don't know. Pass. Notionless. Notionless. <laughs> <laughs> Bert, I don't know. <laughs> Sequin Hollywood singer. <laughs> we talked about this person already today. Hannah Montana. <laughs> no. It's got to be Sinatra. Courageous forest princess. Uh, Zelda? I don't know. Think Disney. Oh. Uh, Tinkerbell. No. Scottish warrior. Uh, Highlander? A movie. Famous movie. Uh, Braveheart. Yes, that's it. Deluxe Candyman. Uh, <laughs> Willy Wonka? Yes. All right. Cyberspace Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Cyberspace Fight? Like, like a cop that catches pedophiles on the internet? <laughs> Just pass. <laughs> pass. I don't know. All right. I'm going to have a hard time getting this next one out. <laughs> K Billy skin suit. <laughs> uh, uh, is that Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs? It puts the Halloween costume on the body and it gets the holes again. Uh, is that what that is? No. Well, <laughs> that's what I thought it was too. I thought the uh, K Billy skin suit. Why would they name it that? Why would you do anything that? <laughs> or better yet, why is he even a costume of that guy? Oh, hey, Billy skin suit? Is it like Jeffrey Dahmer? I don't fucking know. Yellow jacket detective. Oh, uh, Carmen San Diego. No. <laughs> no, it's Dick Tracy. Workout video star. Uh... I body by Jake. Who fucking knows? Why would there be a costume? <laughs> Richard Simmons. <laughs> Three more. Korean pop star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one. Uh, I think I know this one too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to make a joke about this without being insensitive. Move on. All right. Malibu maniac. You're never going to get this one. <laughs> Malibu maniac? 
Kim Kardashian. Fucking, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, that's not not fair. Last one. Short, short sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Zemini <laughs> Sam. <laughs> You remember you know, Sammy Sam used to wear the short pants? <laughs> I just thought they meant a really short one. Oh, short, short, short. short he's always sheriff. wearing Daisy Dukes. Oh, the guy for Rio 911? Yes, I don't know. Oh, wow. All Lieutenant right. Dangle. The Korean pop star was definitely Gangnam Style. Yeah, guy, right? Psy. Oh, yeah. And Chad also said Richard Simmons was workout video star. Yellow Jacket Detective, Chad, do you know that? That was Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. <laughs> I told you I'd be bad. <laughs> you got a few. Juice Demon. Juice Demon was Beetlejuice. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right. Purple yeah. rock star is Prince. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking fictional characters for some reason. Uh, misfit sidekick is Harley Quinn. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> All right. Notionless is <laughs> the girl from Clueless. <laughs> 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 like, notionless is just like a state of being. I don't even know how to answer that. Sequin Hollywood singer was Jessica Rabbit. Mm. Oh. Courageous Forest Princess was Merida, that one from Brave. Yeah. Never seen that movie. Cyberspace Fighter is Neo from The Matrix. Oh, oh okay. And all of it takes place in the cyberspace. <laughs> it's, it's mostly in cyberspace, and he's fighting like b- bites and kilobytes. Malibu Maniac is Charlie Sheen. Okay. And last but not least, <laughs> Kay Billy skin suit <laughs> is Uma Thurman from Kill Bill. What the? <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Back up, back up. What? What about what she has on? Is a skin suit? Kay Billy. <laughs> no, Kay Billy. I get it. Skin suit. <laughs> Why is it a skin it's suit? A, it's a skin tight suit. That no, I wears. get that. Uh, I, it's a very in, odd thing to In Geiger's with. defense, I 100% also thought that was Buffalo Bill. <laughs> Hard for me. I mean, Buffalo Bill character. And <laughs> Do you really suit? want to hurt me? He didn't wear people's skin. Yeah, he did. He was making a skin suit. Wasn't he? And he was rubbing the lotion I just in? remember him kidnapping the people in the basement. He was making a skin suit? Yeah, he was making a skin suit. He was and like he was he was singing Mac Tonight songs down the hole and t- wasn't his name William or Billy or something, right? It was Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill, that right, 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 right. I don't know where the K comes from, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know where the skin suit comes from either, so that's fine. All right. So who's got a bigger hog? Buffalo Bill or Uma Thurman and Kill Bill? <laughs> I don't know. Which K Billy skin suit? <laughs> Buffalo Bill like tuck his in between his legs or something and walk around. Yeah. I mean, we, he hid his hog. I think it's a draw. That was the K Billy skin suit when he tucked his wing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called when you <laughs> tuck your penis between your legs. Is pulling, get, showing the old K Billy skin suit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got one more. <laughs> we've got one more snack to eat, uh-huh. and it's a. Uh, Reese's product. We talk about Reese's a lot on this podcast, and this is the Reese's Reese's pumpkin, but it's the white chocolate Reese's pumpkin. So when I said I came home with Reese's pumpkins, I meant the regular Reese's pumpkins. I've never actually had this white chocolate pumpkin before. Do you guys like white chocolate in general? I usually find it too sweet. Me too. I feel like some sometimes I like it. I like it almost on its own a little bit, but I don't like it mixed with stuff. Yeah, this is. Very peanut buttery smelling, which is good, but also it smells really sweet to me. Now, how, how do you guys feel in general about the special Reese's shapes that they have? Right, they have the pumpkin, they have the egg, the Christmas tree, the heart for Valentine's Day. I will get those every time I see them because I love a Reese's cup. But to me, like the egg actually that comes out around Easter, that is like the perfect, like exactly perfect thing. But I love the other forms as well. Is it because there's more peanut butter or something? Yeah, I think just the ratio is like sort of just exactly perfect. I don't know. There's something about it that, that I really love. What do you guys think? I will regularly get them. I agree. I think it's just kind of for a change of pace. I'd say I like them slightly less than the regular Reese's Cup. I think the peanut butter is just a tad too heavy in those. And I kind of miss the, at least with that chocolate layer, it's kind of nice to have that like outside chocolate layer. And so I think that's the difference for me, but I, I will get them. What about you, Geiger? I like them fine. I mean, I, I don't I don't really find myself buying a ton of candy. Um, I think I'm with Novak. I like the cup a little bit better. I think it's a better 
like mix. I even like a regular standard Reese's cup more than like the mini cup because the mini cup is like deeper. Like, you know what I mean? There's more peanut butter in it. It throws off the mini cup sucks. Hard pass on the mini cup. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. They're not that far afield from a regular. Yeah, I mean, well, okay, look, if they were in a bowl out at a party, I would Mm -hmm. eat them. But like, would never pick those in a million years over a regular Reese's. (laughs) I will. I will go and chat on that. I'm a little disappointed with the mini cup. They're they're okay, but yeah, I agree. I'm just saying, like, and that's why I like the regular cup more than like I like the eggs. I like the trees. I don't go on my way to buy them because I think it's like even this. I'd rather this pumpkin. I'd rather just eat a regular Reese's cup, even if it were white chocolate. I think I'd like it better. All right, I'm gonna start us off. I think this tastes good. I don't think the white chocolate's really overwhelming at all. Um, probably because there's just so much damn peanut butter in this thing that you mostly get peanut butter it's not as good as the milk chocolate which i would put the regular milk chocolate pumpkin i do love i would probably say i love that um but this i'm gonna just give it a very solid like that i would eat it again but i I probably won't buy it because there's a better option uh but i am enjoying it what do you think geiger right in line with you i really don't like white chocolate at all i think it's too sweet and i'm always just wishing i had regular chocolate instead but it this is very like the peanut butter is much more prominent. It's thicker than a regular cup, and you taste more of the peanut butter, and it kind of is dominant over the chocolate, so it kind of obscures that like over. It, it prevents it from being too sweet. I think is my thing. Um, I still don't like it as much as a regular Reese's product. I would say I'm surprised. I thought it would be indifferent. I would give it a mild like that. I don't love it. I would probably again if this was sitting on the shelf right next to a regular Reese's, it's hands down. I'm going to get a regular Reese's, but this isn't bad. I would say I, it's a mild like that for me. All right, Chad. We've all been waiting to hear what you think of a Reese's product. Here we go. Here's the thing. You know, trash Reese's for us. Trash Reese's. Here's the thing. I just said like the Reese's pumpkin is fantastic. I've had three in the past week. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Four counting this one that I just stretching out the old. K Billy skin suit of yours. <laughs> <laughs> did you finish this? Yeah, I did. I, I finished this entire thing. The peanut butter is outstanding. It's that same perfect Reese's peanut butter yep. that uh, mm-hmm. is beloved the world over. Uh-huh. The white chocolate uh-huh. here it comes is not good. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I've, I, I actually conference called Reese's in here right before <laughs> this. I don't know if you knew they were listening. You want to change your mind real quick? So. That peanut butter is great, but the peanut butter chocolate combo is what's amazing. And white chocolate, it's white chocolate, but it's not chocolate. It's just sugar. It's missing any like cocoa or whatever it is. So it's missing that piece that makes the Reese's that perfect chocolate peanut butter combo. So it's just peanut butter with sugar around the outside. So I don't understand the point of this thing. There's no reason to ever eat this. The chocolate is so far superior to it. It's not bad, but it shouldn't exist. So to me, I can't in any good consciousness give this a like that, even though I did eat the whole thing and I enjoyed it while I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much the definition of liking something, Chad. I hate to break it to <laughs> So I'm going to give it an indifferent to that. Oof. Mm, wow. All right. That is a that leaves us with a tie. Yep. Two way tie. The moral of the story is that uh, everything is good except for candy corn. <laughs> uh whew. and i i do think it's a tough choice i think for me the pumpkin and the marshmallow are on pretty level playing field <clears throat> so i think that's a fair fair rating so a tie here for halloween and guys what uh, are you going for as uh going for for halloween this year i'm going as a k charcoal skin suit <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My kids are trying to decide what they want to do. My daughter literally is the one that will walk around the costume shop and every costume she sees wants to be it. I think she landed on Moana or a butterfly. I'm not sure which. I have no idea what my son wants to be. I don't know. if I, Last year, I don't even think I dressed up. I don't, I don't know. I might not do it again this year, but uh, I might. I have. I guess I don't know. My I thought you were going as hardworking lady. That or I was going to go as... Um, <laughs> Purple rock star, as everyone knows, that's Barney and Grimace. <laughs> <laughs> they, they make up two thirds of a of a purple triumvirate. It's Prince, Barney, and Grimace as the three rock stars. I think you'd make a good Mister Hammerwig too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mister Hammerwig or Death Nightcrawler or whatever it was. Uh, who do you? Uh, what do you think, Novak? Are you gonna go as a skinny white guy? I, <laughs> I'm actually 
I'm 90% sure I'm going as uh, Bob Belcher this year because me and my kids also uh, really love Bob's Burgers. And uh. it's the easiest costume in the world of wear white apron and fake mustache. <laughs> Does Bob Belcher have a giant hog? Of course. That's the only characters I go as. <laughs> so <The> Cookie which... <laughs> Monster. <laughs> Do you then have to get like a prosthesis to make up for your... Your underwhelming hog, so that doesn't seem. Un- or do you just like let your dick hang out? <laughs> underwhelming. <laughs> it's more of a piglet. <laughs> and the no, and an episode on your small hog. <laughs> Which of these guys has the biggest hog? I'm gonna uh-huh. of list one. I'm gonna list them quick: Beetlejuice, Prince, Braveheart, Wonka, Neo, Dick Tracy, Richard Simmons, Cy, Charlie Sheen, or Lieutenant Dangle. <laughs> It's clearly Prince. Yeah, <laughs> he was banging up so many women. Novak, didn't you mean to say Hog Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't Neo like manipulate how people viewed his hog? <laughs> <laughs> he just alters the code so that it's like a giant string of ones with one zero at the end. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there is no spoon because the spoon is taped to the end of my hog. <laughs> His hog is just like spearing all the Mr. Smiths like all the way to the end of her. All right, here's the here's the men from list two. Uh-huh. Biggest hog: Link, Minion, <laughs> <laughs> Freddy Krueger, uh-huh. Doctor Who, Mr. T, Guy from Twilight, Jon Snow, Grumpy Cat, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> I actually bet Jon Snow because uh, you know he just he walks around with that level of swagger and confidence. He's you know. Bang and Daenerys, spoiler alert. Again, there's literally a character with the name Hog in it. Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> has a giant wing. <laughs> Sonic, the man is a hog. He's a walking hog that's ribbed for your pleasure. He's not an animal at all. <laughs> He's just a, isn't he just a blue, like, really fast penis that, like, runs around and... What do you do in that game? Collect rings or something? I never played it. Yeah, cock ring. <laughs> Perfect. Cock ring. <laughs> Goes right through the ring. <laughs> just, just like a big old hog. All right. So that's a good place to stop. So <laughs> <laughs> we will be back next time when we will be trying three brand new snacks. Deuces. Yep. Yep.